welcome yeah. guys to um another episode of Taylor Dillon's show. However, today is a takeover episode and I have a special guest. Um this guy I've known for a year now. Yeah. Uh, he's a fantastic dancer, fantastic performer. His name is Jared. So hey Jared, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. excited and I'm ready for the runway. <laughs> <laughs> so let me um let's do a recap. Um we saw Miss Lala Re go home. Um and it's it, it's kind of bittersweet because I was rooting for her. And yeah. who, I saw your video. <laughs> that was yes. that was fantastic. So it's like ooh. it was a really good lip sync between yeah, Elliot yeah. with two T's and Lala. I loved that one. Yeah, it was it was it was great. So moving on to this week's episode, it was the Rusical, uh, an episode that I have been waiting for for pretty much every season now. It's like this and Snatch Game and the reading episode. So. Um, do, wait, do they have a risical? Do they have a risical every season? Pretty much, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, some of them are <laughs> some of them some of them are kind of like out there, but like you know, some of them are like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Um, have you been following the UK season as well? Yeah. Yeah. So you the saw what seasons? The the UK season, the RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh UK. no! I mean, I've seen like clips on youtube but i haven't seen the episodes at all oh, okay okay are they good uh, this one is actually different because the girls are kind of um different from the first one the first one you the first season of uk you, you actually have um a sense of who's going to be your final three right away. This one is just like, oh, I don't like her. Oh, wait, no, she's growing on me. Oh, she's going to be my final three, mm. you know? And yeah. um, they had a Rusical episode. Um, they kind of parodied Cats. Oh. <laughs> they called it Rats the Rusical. So, um, oh you know, my God. We, had, we had it in CarCast. Uh, I wonder if it was as bad it. as, I wonder if it was as bad as the movie. I don't know. I didn't see actually see the movie, but I just heard <laughs> that it was like really bad. <laughs> no, actually, it was. I didn't see the movie because I it, Cass is just not one of my favorite musicals. For a musical theater person, I know. Yeah. So, but yeah. Rats, Rats, the musical. It was. It was fantastic. It was like I was falling oh, cool. off the chair, falling off the sofa. And it's just like fun. But moving on, the social media unverified musical. Mm-hmm. Girl, that audition between <laughs> <laughs> between Denali and um, uh, Rose, that was that was kind of intense. Yeah. Well, you know, to be fair, like that was probably the best way to do it. Like that's probably the fairest way to do it. And I like, I actually like the fact that Denali and well, Rosé and everybody, even uh, what's her name, Utica, was like, no, I really want this part. Like, if you're in a competition and you want to stand out, then yeah, you should be fighting for a part. You shouldn't just be like, oh yeah, you can have it. So I, I was actually really excited to see it. Yeah. yeah. Like, when 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 the first 10 minutes dropped on Wednesday, I'm like, ooh, I gotta watch it. See what the drama is. And then, <laughs> ooh, there's more drama. It's like, <laughs> but yeah but, yeah um did did you think that the girls lived up to your expectation of how this musical episode is going to be um yes i guess i didn't really have much of an expectation except i did know that rose is in the girl group with jan from last season and i know that uh, Jan was really good and I, I think overshadowed as well last season so I was imagining Rosé to do really well and then in the past episodes I think they said that uh, what's her name Tina Burner was uh, like in a boy band or something so I expected her to do well you know as well um, but yeah I didn't think anybody was going to do badly particularly until we started seeing them do the recordings and everything and then i was like oh utica utica and simone i was like girl <laughs> they were struggle city so <laughs> i thought i thought maybe they would be really bad but 
only one of them, one of those two girls. Actually, Utica did really well. Yeah. 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 They were, when they were recording, I'm like, okay, I can dig it. And then it came to Utica. I'm like, okay, I know exactly where they got the, um, the inspiration for this part. You know, it's Hamilton, of course. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. But because, you know, Rosé's big song was Rain in My Parade. And it was like, oh, mm-hmm. funny girl. And there are some there yeah. are some other other um, musicals in there that I have to rewatch just so I can get the reference again. Um, yeah. What did you think of the dancing, though? You being a dancer, what's what's your, what's your <laughs> take on it? Um, OK, when they were learning it from Jamal, first of all, Jamal Sims, can we just take a moment? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I would learn anything from him. <laughs> and then like watching him with his like cleavage out, I was like, boy, you better stop. But anyway, learning the learning the choreo, like the way he did it was great. And then when I saw saw it on their bodies, like most of the queens, I was like, nah. <laughs> I was like, no, that's not it. <laughs> I thought it was decent. I thought it was decent. Rosé did well. I actually thought Tina did really well. Um, Denali is a dancer. Elliot's a dancer. But yeah, I mean, overall, there was nothing. There was nothing to me in this musical that was like, "Wow, this is the moment, like the dance moment." Except for maybe when the Russians came out. But even that wasn't like full full dancing. It was like character dancing, which is you know fun too. But yeah. there was no like crazy leaps or anything. Yeah, it's kind of it kind of it kind of reminded me of how I was looking during our dance rehearsals for Bodyguard last year. <laughs> I was like struggling. No, not g- all. <laughs> no, no, no. You were worse. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you. I accept it. <laughs> Jk, Jk. <laughs> so, um, just to uh, because I mentioned Bodyguard, so last year we were. About to open Bodyguard when um, COVID-19 happened and shut us down. So, unfortunately, we weren't able to... We were to in present. the week of... Yes. The week we had, of, like, rehearsals. I mean, hell week. No, we were in the week of opening, right? Yep. We had one dress rehearsal, and then that was it. Like, we were yeah. about to open that weekend, and then... But, you know... Yeah. It happened, so... I remember... I remember thinking like um we were going to open like a month later and because we all thought it was just going to be like something we'd have to go quarantine for like a a month and then they were like no it's gonna be longer so we're like oh we'll try and push it for three months and see if like Lindsay can come back and do it and so we're like yeah Lindsay's like yeah i can come back in three months and then here we are like a year later and it's still <laughs> it's still <laughs> very much a thing <laughs> yeah yeah it's still very much a thing but um i i don't know I guess I was partial with last season's musical because I'm a fan of Madonna. Like, you know, mm. I'm, I'm like a Michelle Visage. I know a lot about Madonna. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but honestly, though, when, when they were recording, I'm like, mm, I know Simone's going to struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't expect to see Candy struggle so much. Because, you know, she has a big, big personality. So I know she's going to apply that. Um, so, but everybody pretty much had a good storyline this week. Like, there mm-hmm. was nobody who was, like, bad. So it was, it was really yeah. hard to, to see who was going to be in the bottom. Well, there are a clear definition who was going to be, you know, the tops. And, you know, who could potentially be the winner of the challenge yeah so yeah i was really like um i i mean i guess i still am but like one of my favorites this season was simone and still is someone i guess but then like she can't sew she can't sing and she can't dance and i'm like girl <laughs> what did you come there to do to look pretty like i mean yeah. you look gorgeous your your stuff that other people have made look gorgeous and I don't know, her acting stuff was cool too, I guess. But I don't know, some, something's a bit off now. And then Candy, if you ever 
really think about it, three times she's been on stage, like the first one when she was in the winner's circle lip sync, whatever it was called, I forget. She was a mess. The second time in the disco one, she was like a little bit off too. And then this one as well, she's like kind of a mess. So I'm like a little bit, now that I think about it, I'm really not that surprised that she was in the bottom. Yeah, but I was I was trying to um, see something redeemable, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't a big fan of Candy from the very get-go. Um, I, it's just like, something something about her just it's not her attitude like a lot of people are saying but it's more like Uh girl you're gonna come out in those wig in that makeup (laughs) that's kind of rough you know that that's more that's more of like my my um complaint i guess about yeah her but other than that you know it's trying to i'm the opposite to be honest i was like the opposite like when I first watched, before the first episode even came out, I watched like the interview with, with her and like just talking to the camera, learning about who the queens are. And I thought she was funny and I was like, oh, she's super cool. Like she's going to be like wacky and she's like a real character or whatever. And then like throughout the episodes, I was like, okay, do you ever notice that she's like the only one talking in every group setting <laughs> i was like whenever they're in a group it's always her talking and i'm like okay girl like give somebody else a chance <laughs> but you know that's her i guess yeah little girl <laughs> i see it why i see it yeah. <laughs> i see it but i see it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> little girl little girl sit down exactly little girl. exactly and and um since we brought up, you know, Tamisha isms, um, it yeah. seems like after she, after Candy was on the bottom with with Tamisha, she kind of settled down. Yeah, I don't know what that was all about. Honestly, yeah, me too. I, I called it. I called. I was like, kind of like, so they're gonna have this fight, and they're gonna be like really mad at each other, and then the next episode they're gonna be like, oh, but I love you. You're we're sisters, and blah 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah definitely happen exactly like that it's always like that yeah and it makes sense because i guess they're in like a a pressure cooker situation but i was just like uh i don't know they probably just needed to fight with somebody probably i mean i mean they're queens you know they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna try to fight with somebody no matter what but let's move on that are locked up exactly locked up in their hotel rooms (laughs) hotel rooms probably no sex either yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be worse. <laughs> so, um, let's move on to the runway, and the category was yellow. Mm-hmm. What did you think overall? Overall, I thought it was actually a really successful runway for most of them. Like, if not all of them, there wasn't anybody that I thought like, "Ooh, she looks janky." This this runway. Yeah, I thought they all looked pretty good. Um, yeah. What about you? Um. I, I I think it was it was I was pretty impressed except for maybe Tina oh, and yeah. <laughs> and Mick with Tina it's just like girl we know you're from New York you don't have to bring the yellow cab and <laughs> uh, the, I mean when she came out with those headlights on her tits I'm like again kind of like last week's <laughs> runway where you had yeah. boots on your tits. And then with Got Mick, when she turned around the corner, I'm like, okay, Crash Dummies, we've seen that. Oh, Denali yeah. wore it first in the bag challenge, yeah. in the bag ball. So ha- I'm like, have you noticed that though? Have you noticed that like, it's like a weird thing this season because Denali did the Crash Test Dummy and then Mick came out of the Crash Test Dummy, but in yellow. And then even in this specific, uh, in this specific runway, there was two taxi cabs. And then like, what's her name? Olivia wore like the same wig as, as Candy, Candy from another runway. Yeah. And then there was like one more, there was like one more. Oh, Simone wore like the boxing girl thing. And, and Olivia then did. Olivia wore the boxing girl thing. And I was like, girls, I don't know if it's like great minds think alike or if it's like, yeah, it's gotta think more broadly. Yeah, probably the latter, but 
<laughs> my gripe is Michelle is not clocking them for it. Yeah. Usually, usually she does. Usually she's just like, wait, hold on. You have two of those in the same runway. Why? Like four kimonos. <laughs> exactly. You know, so yeah. it's like, cool. Okay, Michelle, what's going I miss, on I, with you? I guess you can't really like, you can't help what they bring i guess i mean I, I think they do have like fabric and stuff in the the workroom so they could work on it but honestly like if that's what you brought it's like that's what you got so i know i kind of get it and most of these girls don't know how to sew it's like i i, yeah. I sort of kind of miss you know the season the season six vibe where pretty much every girl was you know making their own garment in the workroom oh yeah, room. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like bianca like all of the earlier seasons i feel like even like season three and stuff they were like sewing all the time <laughs> exactly like like what's wh why don't we bring that back you know i know so who's your favorite this runway my favorite there's runway i would say um yurika oh yeah was, yeah. yeah she's good it, it was it was it was so out of the box because every single girl in that came out was like oh it's very american and then there, there's yurika i was like european oh kind of disney princessy yeah. and it's hodgepodge yeah. so i'm like oh my god nobody would think to mix those patterns and put it put yellow in between it was just like it actually works. I also liked um, yeah. uh, Elliot actually because it was just like, mm. oh, it's very form fitting. It's nice. It's kind of sexy. It kind of reminds me of um, mm -hmm. Sandy from Greece. You know. Yeah, actually. So. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Who's your favorite? Utica for me. Like okay, so I think that for being a really weird kooky queen, which I actually kind of like. Um, I thought her other weeks taste like that one the pajama uh, sleeping bag she made the sleeping bag garment like that was crazy but this one in the yellow one I thought she was okay like I, to me it was like middle of the road for Utica when Rosé turned the corner I was like yes <laughs> because I got the reference right away like the mask, I was kind of like, she's Jim Carrey. And I don't know if that's just the way her face is structured or if she like painted it that way, but it looked like how Jim Carrey's face looked like in, in the, the, mask. the mask. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, that one I think was one of my favorites. And like, to me, watching from home, I was like, it looked yellow to me. Like, I know Michelle Visage was like, it looks orange. But, you know, like when I was a kid, you used to go through the crayon box and you pick out your favorite colors and one of them used to be like dandelion yellow and i think it's like a darker yellow so maybe that's that's what the color she used yeah um that's... yeah uh, who else is your favorite let's see i didn't really care about denali's until she said it was britney spears python <laughs> so when she said that i was like got it like it but until then i was just like eh, whatever yeah um who else I didn't get Candy's reference until Michelle said it as well. I was like, oh yeah, Beyonce's, hello. I didn't think about it. And then, so I don't know, if it doesn't like splash me in the face, then it's not like, it's not like how Rosé slapped me in the face. But I'm trying to think, who else was there? Um, um, Olivia. Olivia's was really pretty actually. Like, I mean, she, do, she does a lot of pretty drag. Like her stuff is really pretty. She's a really pretty girl. But, you know, honestly, people are probably going to, like, cancel me or, like, kill me. This far, I'm not sold on her yet. Like, I understand why people like her. I understand why people love Olivia, and I get it. Like, she's great. But there's something about her that I'm just like, mm. I'm like, ah. Eh. What did you think? She was one of the ones that I was, uh, I thought is going to um, do well in this challenge because... You know, she she has a musical theater background. She went to uh, musical theater camps and all of that. So I was expecting her to be, you know, high with them. Yeah. Um, I don't think she did that at all. I think she did a, pretty, a really good job. I don't think she was standout or stellar in any way. Um, but I, 
I think she has this weird thing where like, there's two different types of performers to me. There's like the one where they, uh, when they get on stage, they don't know how to control their face. So it's like blank expression, even though they're trying to act and they just talk like this, you know, the whole time. And then there's like the other type of actor who like smiles the whole time because they think like they can just smile and get away with it, but it doesn't fit the character. And that's what I felt like was happening with Olivia. Like she was herself Olivia on stage. It wasn't Mark Zuckerberg or whatever the character she was trying to play. It was just Olivia like, and I was like, okay, <laughs> that doesn't really match, but cool. That's, I mean, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't a character. It wasn't something like, like Rosé was doing, because obviously Rosé slayed it. And Tina, I thought Tina freaking slayed it, to be honest. But. Yeah, I, I also think Tina worked it. I'm like, I was like, oh my God, she is bringing me Patina Miller from Pippin as the leading player and, and Liza in Cabaret. And then I would agree with Michelle, though. As soon as she went on that floor to die, the track is still going, but no mouth was moving. I'm like, girl what's going on i don't think she intended to do that i think that was like a mistake on her part so you know shame shame but i also think if it was a choice like it could have still been funny like if i was if i was in the the judges panel and i saw her like dying like ah, and then she just stopped and she's like and then died while this thing is the thing is the track's still going i would have thought, thought that was hilarious so yeah i don't even think it was that big of a deal I don't know. I, I I didn't think that was a that was a detriment for her though. I, I, I yeah. I didn't. That think seemed she like been. a very. That seemed like a very producer moment where the producers was like, throw Tina in the bottom, and then RuPaul's like, uh, okay, sure. I mean, they all did pretty well. I'll throw Tina in the bottom to shake it up and make drama for the show. That's what it seemed like. It, that's what it, because there was nobody else really to be in the bottom aside from Simone and Candy, which yeah. And I, I would agree with um, with Michelle and Jamal though about Candy, and we heard this from the very uh, from the third episode, second episode I think, or third I can't remember, um, with what's her name, <sighs> with Tina, when they were doing the the winner circle um, congratulations thing. Michelle said. You know, we're filming for TV. We're not in a bar. We need to see your face. You need to look at the camera. And with yeah, um, Candy, she was looking, but at the same time, the w the wig that she was wearing was just not cooperating. It's just like okay, yeah. whatever, girl. Yeah. yeah. And once again, and, and I've seen her wear that wig before too. Which one? Oh, Who? Uh, Candy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure because they're only allowed, you know, two luggages, but <laughs> style it differently this time. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you know. So you have you have you have all this time to uh, to make it for your for for the challenge. Style it differently. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. Who else was there? I'm trying the, to see got the Mick. Oh, yeah, got Mick. <laughs> the Russians, the Russians. Yeah. Um when she picked that Russian, I was like, "Oh my god. I hope she, I hope she can do the accent because Russian accent is hard." <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I, sure. I I mean, I did it when I did Matilda, but I'm like, and that was just like a few sentences and it was just like really really hard to to learn and it's just like yeah. So yeah. I mean, I thought, I think she did well, though. I think it's funny because she was so adamant about getting that position. And then her twin or whatever they're called was Denali. And Denali was the opposite. Like, she didn't want it at all. She's like, I don't want that position. So can you imagine if you were, like, on the couch and they were, like, divvying out different positions? And then you're like, I'm one of the Russian twins. And then everybody else is like, I don't want to be your twin. <laughs> I would be like, like okay, okay. <laughs> can I just have somebody to work with? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think um, Anne Hathaway's visit to the workroom, mm. that surprise visit to the workroom, changed Denali's um, perspective. Yeah, for sure. 
when she when when Mick asked all those questions for Denali, it's just like, oh, it was yeah. a setup, but set up in the best way. <laughs> exactly. It was it was yeah. it was a good setup. So, yeah. Um, that lip sync song, "Boss" by Fifth Harmony. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I saw your video. <laughs> About the song, yeah. Yes. About the song or about the lip sync? Well, let's let's talk about the the whole lip sync. Okay, so Candy Muse and Simone were both in the bottom, which wasn't surprising to me because I already knew that Tina was going to be safe. Like honestly, when they called the six girls and they were like, "These are the three top, these are the tops and the bottoms," I was like, "Oh, it's going to be a uh, four girls in the top and two girls in the bottoms." So I thought Tina, Rose, uh. Mick. the twins yeah and then i thought that it was for sure going to be simone and um and candy. candy but anyway it ended up being simone and candy to lip sync for their life anyway um when it started i mean like i guess i like fifth harmony because i i know like some of their songs but i don't i'm not like a huge fan of theirs so i don't know like who like if i hear their songs i don't know it's them singing it half the time so when i heard this song i was like oh it's a fifth harmony song that's cool um, but yeah, it was a fun song. It was it was cool, and then yeah, the dancing and everything was to me it was funny. <laughs> like I thought it was like watching somebody who's like not really a dancer, aka Simone, and then there's watching like Candy who's like so desperate to stay. That she's just gonna throw her body on or on the whole entire stage at, and like in every every verse. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I saw that desperation in her eyes. Um, yeah, but I think I know. I don't know. I uh, there are some conspiracy theories going out that sometimes you know the lip syncs are chosen for the person they want to stay. So mm-hmm. kind of like. Um, when they had the disco challenge, it was like, okay, that's not a disco song, but okay, whatever. Hit me up, hit them up style. Yeah. Blue. Like, okay, that's definitely being thrown to well, candy. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that even in the past, I watched an interview or something where Detox was saying in season five, when it was the, the lip sync between Detox and Jinx. Jinx. Yeah. That it was supposed to be a completely different song. But then when they found out that Jinx, was going to be in the bottom they're like we're changing it to this song like last minute so i'm pretty sure that they do do that to yeah. cater to it because they wanted jinx to win you know yeah. but um so going back to this lip sync it was like you can you can see the desperation in um candy's eyes that she really wants to stay but simone is such a strong stronger performer compared to candy yeah. and Candy has been on the bottom. This is Candy's second time in the bottom. It's Simone's first. So she knew that. Yeah. I, yeah. I think, like, for Simone, especially, she knows what she's not good at. So she's not going to go and try and do split. She's not going to try and, like, throw her body here and there and everywhere because she's like, that's not what I do. And knowing that and, like, owning that almost makes it better because she has that presence about her when she's on stage she just like looks at the the audience or whatever and it's like oh yeah okay she's here to perform whereas candy it's like like how we saw in most of her other group lip syncs it's like she's kind of (laughs) mess but like she at least she's trying really hard it's not like she just stood there or anything she was like trying but she was like kind of a mess Yeah, yeah she was fighting so i mean speaking of splits and and stunts, Jared is a wonderful, wonderful teacher <laughs> for that. So yeah. yeah. If you want to go watch my little copycat videos, you can look at my Instagram. <laughs> Those yeah. are fun. Well we'll have we'll have his Instagram in the on the description so you guys can follow him. Yeah. yeah. But um double chante. I thought for sure that Candy was gonna go. Were you surprised? Yeah, and on, um, I wasn't okay. So when they finished 
and RuPaul said, Simone, Chante, you stay. I noticed that she didn't say sachet away to Candy. So I was like, oh, she's gonna, she's gonna keep both of them. Like, it's just gonna be a thing. And then RuPaul did say sachet uh, away to Candy. So I was like, oh, okay, I guess she is going home. And then I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, send her home. Because to me, this is how I think now. Like, Candy's not gonna win at the end anyway. So it's like, it's all just, like just chopping off the blocks until you get to the ones who could possibly win and in my brain like you know as much as I like Lala last Lala re last week I was like in my brain she's not going to make it to the finale she's not going to win either so I was like you know it's just like you just chop them off until you get to the serious ones um but then when she said wait candy candy wait like keep stay I'm not ready to let you go I was kind of like oh god there it is you know, yeah. <laughs> the thing that I was expecting, but then I got juked out of it. And then, yeah, it <laughs> came back. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like, uh, okay, whatever. I guess I have to deal with her. Well, more. think about this. Think about this. We're on like episode eight or nine or whatever. And there's only been like three or four girls that's gone home already. Like that's, all the way, that's like halfway into the season and only like a few of them have gone home. That's like a lot of girls still left. <laughs> but... I think the reason why, this is a conspiracy theory again, that I heard. The reason why she kept Candy is because Candy, Candy's Snatch Game is apparently going to be really, really interesting. Right. I mean, I can so. totally see that. And, and honestly, she's the biggest personality on the entire season. So I can see even the producers just being like, hey, Ru, like, you got to keep her around because if not, the season's gonna be really boring. Oh, kind of uh, like um, silky. Yeah, basically. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, so yeah, if next next episode is Snatch Game. I think they're like, I'll oh, just keep her till Snatch Game, and then you can just chop her after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like over. I'm over the whole like saving girls thing. To me, mm. I'm just like. Like send them all home. <laughs> send them all home. Let's send them all home because like, we only get to like yeah like none of this like okay the first three episodes like nobody went home and then we're like saving somebody again I'm like God like let's eliminate but you know what's another thing is like if that was to be anybody else like if that was Denali if that was like even Tina or Got Nick they probably wouldn't save them so it's kind of unfair. <laughs> You know, yeah. it's just because it's Candy and her personality, but that's life, I guess. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, um, but they didn't have anything that they didn't have any previews on next week on RuPaul's Drag Race. I think they did. Oh, I don't remember. No. I think they did though. I think okay. I th- because I think they're gonna they're gonna do the the cor- the special they had that they created um, about how they filmed, you know, uh, the season during Corona. Kind of like what they did yeah. in, um, in UK because in UK they started filming and then they were in the middle of filming March um, of 2020 when they stopped. Seven months later, November, they came back and they had a special Queens on lockdown, basically. So basically everybody was like recording themselves on, on zoom, on something, you know, what they, what they were doing so, during wait. lockdown. So the UK, Oh shoot. Hold on. That's okay. Can you still see me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, the UK, ver- the UK season that's going on now, like stopped halfway and then it just, stopped like they're not continuing it at the moment or what's what's up okay so they started filming and then but they showed it on on air too right yeah it's it's on air right now so they they started filming in january of 2020 and then Mm -hmm. when they started filming i guess the cases in the uk got really bad that they got shut down and um basically they were they only said oh it's only gonna be for a couple months couple months turned into seven months so they resumed filming in november 
Can you just imagine how fast the turnaround, the editing, and everything was done so they can premiere it in January? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So they're going to actually, I mean, I'm sure they're in the middle of it right now, but the plan is they're still going to finish it on air, is what I'm asking, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, That's cool. Yeah. So when they got back, it's like, so they already know what to do, basically on how to be safe filming wise because while they were in shutdown for that seven months that's when they filmed the uh season 13 and apparently all-star six mm. Don't quote me on that one that's what i heard but, <laughs> yeah <laughs> who, who would you want to see on all-star six? Oh my god um i want to see pandora definitely okay yeah um I want to see who else? Pandora, Ginger. Um, because I think she needs to redeem herself on that one. Um, mm. From earlier, or from, from newer seasons, probably, I don't know, uh, Jackie Cox, because she was robbed. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jan, maybe. Yeah, it would um, be really cool if Jan and Rose were on All Stars together. Like, I don't know if Rose is going to win or not, but I'm just saying if she loses and then both of them go head to head against each other, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, but we won't know who who wins um, season 13 yeah. until later on. So, and they already filmed uh, All Star 6. So. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. But um, so. Yeah, I mean, it's great having you. Great seeing you. It's been a long time. Yeah, you I'm... too. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't I haven't seen you go jog uh, along the uh, Date Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, sometimes you want to run and sometimes you don't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. And, and you kind of live far from town, so yeah but but yeah so we will have jared's instagram profile in the description of this episode so you guys give him a follow because his videos are sick it's like mm, so good copycat videos trust me he's he's really he's really great so but yeah so we will Thanks. be back in the car cast in a couple weeks it's just there's a little bit of hiccup going on because somebody we're both working right now so um are you back at the theater by the way yep back at diamond head theater in the office and admin putting together shows as much as we can and classes so yeah nice. check out diamond head theater for shows and classes if you can yeah and a moment and and if you guys want to um join his class jared's class um it's wednesday right it's wednesdays via zoom um it was wednesdays but we took it off so oh. now I just teach the shooting stars kids. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. One well, day it'll come back, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, but um, thank you, Jared, for, for spending your little bit of time with, with the Taylor Dillon Show takeover episode for the Rusical. Yeah. Hopefully we can, we can have you again um, on another episode where we discuss RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13. So until then, bye, guys. Good luck and don't.